What do you mean something's coming out about Chris? Oh, God. Oh, it's gonna be a PR nightmare. Oh my God, did he say the... Hey guys, here's the big Lebrowski coming in again with another video for you to watch and question the very fabric of reality. So there has been a question going through my mind as of late due to the recent drama outbreak that has been going on. The hot topic right now are the Chris Tyson allegations, which we will get into detail later on in this video. But these weren't the only career ruining moments that have taken place in the last weeks or even months. We have plenty of examples we could talk about. If we go way back into the past, we can find people the likes of the infamous ETP 445 and the cupcake incident or Colleen Bollinger the holder of the worst apology video of all time and if we look for something more recent there's Dr. Disrespect shooting himself in the foot again and possibly ruining forever what was one of the most successful careers of all time and well now the topic of the hour the Chris Tyson allegations and I have to make an honorable mention to that other creep Cody Co which I recently talked about all of these cases have something in common for whatever reason these people decided to throw away Way their successful careers to the garbage bin just because they couldn't help themselves but to think with the wrong head well except of Colleen Ballinger that is but even worse than that they let loose the sick creep that lived within them and they were victims of their lower instincts so let's start breaking down some of the most insane cases of youtubers that had it all but decided to crash and burn in seconds just because they were horny and after that I will give three reasons on why I think that successful youtubers just keep ruining their careers so if we're making a video about infamous creeps, we have to start with one of the most renowned cases of ruin it all for being a disgraceful horny bastard. So naturally we have to talk about EDP 445, one of the biggest cases of YouTubers being exposed as predators in the last couple of years. Everyone and their mother were talking about this when it happened and with reason. This guy did everything in his power to just throw away the chance of a lifetime just because of his sick perversion. So the story goes that EDP 445, a huge YouTuber that had over 2 million subscribers at some point. He had a variety channel where he was basically himself and that was pretty much about it. People liked him because of how over the top he was and how real he was. Well, that age poorly did it. Anyway, throughout the years, there were several rumors going around of him talking inappropriately to minors and in 2020, there were even DMs that got leaked. Lucy, you better show me some f***ing titties. I don't give a f***. Like, you talking about you want me to wish that nigga happy birthday, motherfucker? You better show me some Titties or something, oh my god, EDP, like she's 14, like she's 15, motherfucker. I don't give a fuck, nigga, if the bitch is one, motherfucker, like ain't shit free in this motherfucker. Anyway, even though this got leaked, somehow he managed to pull through, mostly because his fans didn't think much about it and just disregarded everything by saying it was just his dark humor. A couple of months later, a YouTuber that went by the name of Cold Raven exposed EDP445 once again by creating a decoy account on Instagram and EDP445 being the biggest creep that he is, once again fell for it. And despite the already damning accusations that were circling around his name from before, he still showed a defiant attitude and made a ridiculous video response to Cold Raven. These wings are bomb as I'm getting this shit up. Mm. 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 Mm.
That has to be hands down the most stupid and cringe response video of all time. Anyway, after that, he just kept spiraling down and in another video that now has been deleted, he stated some crazy sh** that to be honest, I couldn't believe my eyes when I read them. I am not even going to read them out loud because I will get strike out of the universe, so I will just put the screens with some elevator background music. this guy huh but even with all that very much condemning evidence he somehow still avoided getting cancelled well that was until april of 2021 when he would finally get exposed for being the infamous script that he is and this time it was game over for him so edp 445 got caught red-handed trying to meet with a non-adult person in a sting operation that was run by this guy chet goldstein so edp 445 went to a meeting spot in the hopes that he would get together with an underage female and much to his disappointment the only thing he found there were three grown ass dudes pointing cameras at him and confronting him for his borderline criminal behavior so i'm gonna say you, any weapons on you no i'm gonna say we were sophie the whole time okay uh -huh. so if you want this to go well i recommend you have a talk with us okay okay cool all right let's have a talk uh let's go have a talk how about on that bench right there okay okay let's go have a seat all right Right here? Uh, yeah, that's cool. We can just sit right here on this curb right here. Okay, cool. What's up, man? Sorry, but I just have to point out the way that he walks had me laughing for five minutes. <laughs> okay, so... Okay. So before we get into any of the messages right here, I have 84 messages. Okay. So... We have you talking to Sophie. Correct, yes or no? Right. Okay. Sophie is how old? Before, and again, I have it right here. I know the answer, but okay. I just need you to tell me the answer. How old is she? 13. 13, okay. Right. And before we get into the messages, there was sexual content involved, yes or no? Right. And you said Correct. Okay, all right. So you could even hear the fear in his voice because he knew he done f***ed up. Anyway, after that, the words that would come out of his mouth would forever remain in internet history because that's why this whole situation ended up being known as the cupcake incident. Oh. Again, so what brings you out here today? Um, well, I was uh, coming out here to- Glasses off. Okay. Go ahead. Well, I was actually coming out here to pick up a cupcake <laughs> and then go back home. Um, there was, you know, nothing that was going to be sexual involved because I'm not like that, you know? Well, obviously the text messages and stuff like that, you know what I mean? Um, yeah that was and those would be edp's famous last words because he never recovered from the cupcake incident even though he tried and he tried hard but everywhere he went he got banned he even went as far as going to some obscure apps to try and get some of his internet presence back omg edp i'm such a big fan of you like i'm being so serious thank you uh, how like why did you come to big up you said what why did you come to Big O? What the fuck is Big O? This app. Oh, you mean Big O? Oh. Yeah. You know what the fuck yeah, you're talking yeah. about? Um. So you don't want bitches, but you want kids? Block him. He's gone. Get him out. You bad, bad ass, you big ass bitch. Just stop being nasty ass and up. Bitch, you get a head ass bitch. Bitch, you like touching on little kids. Bitch, you want a cupcake? Bitch, you want a cupcake face nasty big ass bitch. You bad ass, you big ass bitch. You better touch me next? You wanna touch me? You wanna touch me, you nasty, nasty, nasty bitch? Bitch, you bald head ass bitch. Nowadays, the only place where he is still somewhat active is on Instagram because even his website is now dead since he couldn't afford to pay for the monthly fee. <laughs> so it is safe to say that EDP 445 will never make a recovery from what it probably was the biggest f*** up of his life. 
just like with PDF file 445, if we are talking about creeps, I can't help but mention what was one of the biggest downfalls of all time, at least in my opinion. And this one is very recent. So the man in question is none other than Guy Beam, better known as Dr. Disrespect. If you have been online in the last couple of years, I would bet my left nut that you have seen this guy somewhere. At some point he was the face of Twitch, being their biggest streamer for a long time. Hell, this dude started streaming there when it wasn't even called Twitch but Justin TV. Yeah, I know, lamest name ever. Anyway, Guy Beam had a rise to fame due to his over the top personality, which he took to the extreme by portraying a character that would be his trademark and what backed him more money that he would ever be able to spend on his lifetime. His crazy performance while on camera, in addition with decent gaming skills, made him a streaming sensation. This guy had signed deals with a lot of renowned brands, he had a multi millionaire concert with Twitch, and even managed to co found his own gaming studio. Everything seemed to be perfect for the duck. But we all know that nothing is perfect, and everything that goes up eventually goes down, and the higher you go, the harder you fall. And Dr. Disrespect was no exception. On June 26 of 2020, and out of nowhere, Dr. Disrespect's Twitch account would be indefinitely banned from the platform. The only information available at the time would be an official statement from Twitch that read, as is our process, we take appropriate action when we have evidence that a streamer has acted in violation of our community guidelines or terms of service. This applied to all streamers, regardless of status or prominence in the community. Initially, the doc didn't know exactly why he got banned. Nevertheless, a year later, he would state that now he knew the reason for the ban. It's been extremely disheartening. It's been it's been a roller coaster of emotion, and it's absolutely fucking sucks. And to, to and to end off my little discussion here. But a lot of people ask me, do, do you know the reason? Yeah, I do know the reason why now. I've known for months now the reason why. And I'll just say this right now, champs. There's a reason why we're suing the f out of them, okay? Uh, I don't know how else to put it. The amount of damages and, and you just don't... No. No. Knowing what we know now, it's crazy that not only he got paid, despite of what he did, but also the way he said that he is suing Twitch is kinda crazy dude. Anyway, during all this time, there have been all sorts of crazy theories on why Dr. Disrespect got banned from Twitch, but the more prominent ones were mostly about money, like for example him getting caught negotiating with another streaming company that wanted to compete with Twitch at the time. I think I know the answers. The data is in the details, so let's think about this for a second. First, Doc signed with Twitch for millions of dollars and this is during the time when Mixer was signing big creators over to their platform like Ninja and Shroud. I think the most likely scenario is that Doc saw these other streamers getting big signing checks and he's like, man, that's what I need for my channel. Why am I not getting that? Another theory that took place back then was that maybe it could be something related with sexual assault because back then there were a lot of accusations going on in the gaming industry and people thought that this could be the reason of the ban. And well, they were not that far away because a couple of weeks ago, Dr. Disrespect got exposed big time. A former Twitch employee decided to spill the beans on X and they said that the reason why Dr. Disrespect was banned and his millionaire contract cancelled was due to him texting inappropriately with an underage person. This news obviously blew up and while everyone was waiting to see what the dog would say to clear his name, he managed to make things even worse because he went on to post on X and what he said there only raised more questions than answers. So he basically started by saying that he wanted to be real with his fans and that he was going to talk without filter and oh boy that he did he then said that everyone wanted to know what happened with the van four years ago from now and that he couldn't really say anything for legal reasons but now that the other two dudes exposed him he can finally talk and well his side of the story was probably not what his fans were waiting because he blatantly admitted to talk with what he calls an individual minor and even though he says that the intentions behind this conversation were never serious well people didn't give a crap about that and I would say that was the final nail on Doc's coffin. He then proceeded to say that he is not a PDF file and that anyone that knows him knows that he could never do something so horrible like that. And here I want to make a quick remark. On the beginning of that 
to it, he said that this happened on 2017, which funny enough is the same year where he admitted he cheated on his wife. Now, I am not saying that he did cheat on his wife with this same underage person, but it's still crazy that all of that shit happened in the same year. Again, I am not affirming anything here. These are just all allegations. I am poor. I can't afford to get sued. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, this revelation had catastrophic consequences for Dr. Disrespect, who basically got cancelled from everywhere. He even got cut off from his own video game company, where he was one of the co-founders. And some people are saying that the moments before the disaster were caught on camera while he was playing Elden Ring, where you can see him getting really disturbed by something that he appears to be reading on his phone. What about quest lines? I know, I know, but you know, you know how we... You know how we run things here. The last part of his post, however, suggests that he is still planning to make a comeback after this. And I mean, he already did so after his cheating scandal back then and it went well. But now, I don't think that's happening, brother. Besides, he now got suspended and demonetized on YouTube. So the only alternative that he would have would be streaming on Kick, And that would be crazy. Can you imagine Dr. Disrespect on Kick? Well, he would probably fit in quite well with the amount of degenerates that stream there. Mike, I'm just looking out for you. I don't, we don't like teenage girls. I do. So leave. I love them. I love them. So get the f out of here. I love them. So go leave. Are you f***ing queer, retard losers? Are you kidding? Pathetic. Finally, it's time we address the latest case of another big content creator shooting themselves on the foot. And this one is just so incredibly bad because it involves someone that is inside the circle of none other than Mr. Beast. Yeah, the guy that probably is considered as the nicest person on YouTube is friends with a great A degenerate. So there was this video going viral in the last couple of days titled This video will make you hate Chris Tyson by a YouTuber named Aatrox. All the big channels covered it and well it looks like it had the desired effect because everyone is really hating on chris tyson right now but if you're like me you probably have no idea who the hell chris tyson is because i have never watched a single mr beast video so let's take a look hey, it's me. Yeah. Help me. Damn, dude, that ratio though. <laughs> yeah, well, that's basically all you need to know. Chris Tyson is just a friend of Mr. Beast, and they appeared on some of his videos. At some point, he came out as a transgender person, and well, there's not much else about it. As far as I know, back in the day when they were Chris with C instead of K, they were appearing in most of Mr. Beast's videos, but I cannot confirm or deny because I refuse to get exposed to the brain rot that Mr. Beast's videos are. So, anyway, moving on. Funny enough, Chris Tyson was already involved in some controversy last year when they got called out for being a creep and you better hold on to your chair by none other than EDP 445 himself. <laughs> yes, I know the irony. Holy shit, man. So my motherfucking main nigga Chris Tyson um supports child. He's into that freak ass shit. We got to protect our youth. We got to protect our kids and our goddaughters and our nephews and our nieces and our cousins i swear you can't make this shit up dude <laughs> edp445 calling out other people for being creeps is just so rich but anyway the point is that this chris person got some serious allegations once again from this guy Aatrox that involves cp well kinda because it's not like cp involving actual people as far as i know it is actually manga but since i enjoy the irony of edp calling out and another creep i will keep pushing it and i'ma let this fool elaborate further chris tyson 
is friends with somebody named, I think his name is Shadman, Chadman, whatever the f his name is. And um, Chris Tyson and Chadman, Shadman, excuse me, um, they're into Lollicon. And if you guys don't know what Lollicon is, Lollicon is basically, basically my nigga, um, the way I'm going to describe it, Lollicon is basically um, Japanese manga that is little kids um, getting f and getting sexually abused and sexually fucking molested by goddamn older f by their older parents through um through anime Japanese manga and the fucking weird ass freak ass. And well, when you take a look at Adrops's video, only that he had more evidence to back it up. During the video, he makes a compilation of all the times that Chris Tyson tweeted some really questionable stuff regarding Lalacon. Yes, I said it that way intentionally so I don't get banned. But yeah, like EDP said, Chris Tyson was friends with this Shadman person, which like Adrops says on his video, this guy went to study art in Switzerland and then he got expelled because of his art and we all know what happened the last time someone got expelled from art school in those parts but anyway apparently this chris tyson person got caught in several locations asking this shadman guy to draw some lalacon for them and he even got exposed for having a piece of shadman's art on their bedroom and this even got featured during one of mr beast's videos just give it back yeah. damn dude yeah <laughs> definitely way to finish off tonight <laughs> thank, thank you so thank much you. no thank you like right. You know, like my cop. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm hungry as shit, man. I'm, I mean, I would go extra large, but my my girlfriend might get mad at me. But I mean, no, nah, I'll do large though. I'll do large. You guys. Yup, there it is in all its glory. By the way, a big shout out to Aedrox for including the timestamp on that video. Once again, sparing me the disgrace of watching more of Mr. Beast than I really need to. Anyway, but the thing is that all of this is not new because Chris already got exposed for being a creep, so we can only wait and see what is going to happen from here on. At least, like I said, a lot of big channels are talking about it and, well, it's getting more exposure. Just like it happened with the Cody Ko situation, another creep that hooked up with a 17-year-old if you don't know what I'm talking about, here's the video where I discuss that situation. You can go watch it after this. Hey, here's the big Lebrowski from the future. So it turns out that as I was editing this video, a bunch of new information just dropped. And I really had to add it here because it is way too relevant to be left out. So first, there's this guy named Dawson that allegedly worked for Mr. Beast. And he stated that there's a bunch of really dark stuff that is going on behind the scenes of the whole Mr. Beast operation. I'm outside Mr. Beast studio right now. Here's a cornfield, I'll explain that tomorrow. Um, I've just been driving by looking uh, to, to see, you know, is there an FBI raid going on, what's happening? My name is Dawson. I worked at Mr. Beast from February to May of this year, 2024. Chris is the, the tip of the iceberg. And when Jake the Viking says, Mr. Beast knew, yeah, Mr. Beast knew. Um, I heard many times that Ava, Chris Tyson, is a major liability, but they can't get rid of her because she's already threatened legal action and she knows too much. And when all this information comes out about everything that she knew, everything other people know, I promise you on everything Mr. Beast has done. Amazon, if you can get your money back, get your money back. So yeah, like that guy said, apparently Mr. Beast knew all of what Chris Tyson was doing and people are now pressing Jimmy for an answer because, well, it really looks bad if he knew what was going on and did nothing. Or at the very least, he did not cut ties with Chris Tyson as soon as he found out. but things get even worse because allegedly more messages got leaked of Chris talking to minors and if this turns out to be true this dude would be more cooked than the turkey your mom served for Christmas last year. So in this screen capture we can see some crazy messages that Chris sent to this kid that she was talking to and she said some crazy shit like I could give you anything, I could spoil you, your birthday is coming up isn't it? Which by the way confirms that Chris knew back then that the person that she was talking to was underage and besides this person literally said it to her but the worst part of all is that at the end of the conversation chris tells this minor that she loves them and then tries to play it as if it was a typo like come on dude what the fuck are you even doing literally this person is bagging millions per year she could have whatever do with the woman she wants and instead decides to do some stupid shit like this i can't even start to comprehend this whole situation and you gotta love people on the internet because they come up with the craziest shit. even in horrible situations like 
like this <laughs> like this picture here <laughs> new mr beast video i locked 100 kids in a room with my best friend <laughs> or this year what do you mean something's coming out about chris oh god oh it's gonna be a pr nightmare oh my god did he say the did he say no no okay did he say anything crazy like men should be in women's bathrooms no Oh, he only sexed and met up with a minor? Oh, thank God. Okay. All right. We, he can stick around. We can sweep this in the rug. Thank God. Oh, my God. I thought he was something terrible, like a racist or something. Thank God. Thank you, Moloch. Oh, my God. Oh. And someone made a video with the AI voice of Mr. Beast, and I mean, it's pretty offensive, but Loki, it's also damn funny. Chris Tyson is a stupid nigger training, and I'm glad he got exposed. I was only friends with this faggot because I don't want to lose brand deals. But now I can finally get away from this disgusting creature. Hey, nigger, explain yourself. So yeah, anyway, now that we're all up to date with the latest on this case, let's go to the final part of the video. So after breaking down these three cases, there are a few theories that I have in mind on why these big content creators decide to destroy the successful careers they built over the years in just seconds. And believe me, even though I talked only about three people here, there are way too many cases. Like just to mention a few, Colin Bollinger, Onision, Shane Dawson, Austin Jones, Hill Mike, Serka, and the list can go on and on for a while. So why do they do it? Why risk it all for something that for most of us is so incredible? comprehensible well my first theory is because some of these people when they rise to fame they have a feeling of being untouchable invincible like nothing can bring them down fame can be really complex to deal with i imagine and i feel that at some point these people just have a distorted perception of the reality they live in the constant validation of the millions of people that watch and follow them every day can make them feel like they are just unstoppable and that they are better than everyone else like if they would be above the standard behavior. The constant need for staying relevant poisons these people's brains to a point where they would go to extreme lengths just to get that viral moment, even if that means doing morally incorrect things just like all of these content creators did. Another reason I think why many of these internet personalities fall into this trap is because of the kick that they get from doing stuff that it would be considered as forbidden and well even illegal because of how brain rotted these people are since we all know how much of a drug cloud is these influencers youtubers or however you want to call it they seem unable to spot the difference between what's acceptable behavior and what's not the adrenaline rush that they must feel when they know that they're doing something that is wrong makes it for them more than tempting i would assume the unbalance of power when a big content creator starts to talk with a fan is huge and just like the content creators get blinded by the kick of doing something that's morally wrong the victims get blinded by the fact that their favorite creator is talking to them and in some cases even connecting on a more personal level. This obviously leads to a lose-lose situation in each and every case. Finally, the last reason I believe why this happens so often is because there is a huge lack of accountability when these kind of things happen. I mean, look at Dr. The Suspect's case. It literally took four years for it to come out to the public. And the same is with Cody Co. Even though the victim talked about it repeatedly, that case got so well swept under the rug that no one even talked about it up until now. This definitely contributes for famous people to develop some sort of impunity. When someone that has a big following and it's bringing the big bucks to the platform that they are working with, usually there is a lot of pressure to try and protect their public image. It was actually surprising to see that Dr. Disrespect, for example, actually got banned from Twitch when this happened. And now that he got exposed, he also got cancelled from everywhere pretty quick. But cases like this are not that common. Take for example Cody Ko, I'm Alex, or now even this Chris Tyson person, they're all people that to this day are still to face real consequences for their actions. Anyway, only time will tell if this is going to change for the better or it will just keep getting worse. I guess as long as there are still people willing to talk about this and expose people doing disgusting stuff like the ones we discussed here today and many others of whom we don't even know yet, well I think they will probably think about it twice before doing something so terrible. So yeah guys, that is it for today's video and I know that it's usually not 
not the kind of video I make but I really wanted to talk a little bit about this whole situation because there have been allegations up the ass lately and I didn't get the chance to cover them individually because yeah I have a life believe it or not so you know how this goes subscribe to the channel if you'd like to hear me yap about stuff like this and leave a like and a comment sharing your thoughts on this situation do you agree with any of my theories do you have a theory of your own I will be reading what you guys have to say anyway I'm the big Lebrowski take care and I'm out I'm letting my titties hang and I don't give a fuck.